the service today. Welcome to Sharon SDA. Let us treat sin like COVID-19. How is that? Isolating ourselves from it. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 states, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Let us live for Christ's soon return. Please enjoy the service today. Hello, everyone, and welcome again. Happy Sabbath to you. It's so glad to have you back here again with us at Sharon Seventh-day Adventist Church in this virtual mode. We've gotten pretty comfortable with this. Uh, we're just happy to have you with us here on this Sabbath. I'm Pastor Michael Dyson, and we love to worship the Lord here. We love to worship his holy name. Uh, and even with the restrictions put on with uh, this pandemic of not really being able to sing and have praise teams like we do. We know you've been singing in your homes. We know that you've been praising the Lord wherever you are. And the enemy cannot stop our praise. You ought to come on, somebody. We're going to praise him anyhow. And we're so thankful for his love. We're so thankful for his blessings. We're so thankful for his grace. And we are a Bible-believing church because the word of God is alive at Sharon. And our affirmation of faith uh, it, it resembles that by going to the book of John, chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. That is our affirmation of faith. John 3, 16 and 17. And join along with us. In my Bible, it says this, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life, and then John 3, 17, this power verses, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. Now this God has come to save us. He wants to save us. He wants to give us an opportunity not to perish, but to be saved. And then he continues with the gifts. And our gifts of what God has said, we see it in Ephesians chapter 2, beginning at verses 8 and 9. Ephesians chapter 2, beginning at verse 8 and ending at verse 9, it says this, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. We can't work our way into the kingdom. It is a gift of God, and a gift began by God sending his Son to save us. Only his Son had the ability to save us uh, because the price of redemption would be the shedding of blood. And without the shedding of blood, there was no remission of sin. Oh, we're so thankful for this God. We're thankful for you. We're glad that you've joined us today. And even now, as we are praying for those who have been dealing with so many issues, even during this season of Thanksgiving, there are people in the hospital there are people who are dealing with this pandemic. There are people who are dealing with issues on their jobs and in their homes. But we've not forgotten about you. We love you. And we experience it as well. And we pray for you. Each and every day we pray at 12 noon. And we call out the names of those who have called in. But they often will bring other names. And they pray for you. They say, pray for our community. Pray for our country. Pray for this global panicked world. And so today we continue in prayer. I ask for a special prayer. I've got a sister, Shirley, we call her Peaches, who's been in the hospital, spent Thanksgiving in the hospital bed. And there are others. We've got some from our church, our community services leader, Spring Heart. Spring is one of the main ones that helps feed the community here each and every Saturday as they come, and she is dealing with pneumonia, but she's getting better. And so many others that you know, church family we know, and we're praying for you. And we just want you to know that we love you, we've not forgotten you, and we lift you up to the Master in prayer. And we continue to do that now. Can we pray with you this morning? Let's pray together. 
Oh, gracious Heavenly Father, what a wonderful God you are. Father, we thank you for the season where people have recognized the blessings and goodness that you have given to us. We thank you for food and the abundance of it. But Lord, we ask you to bless even that one who has not had food but who is struggling. But Father, we ask you to be with families today that are in need of your hand and in need of your love and in your embrace, your embrace for them. And Father, we ask you to be with those that are sick today. I ask you to go by hospital rooms, my sister and many others. I ask you to be with families, Lord. We've been praying for families that have been grieving at the loss of loved ones. We see the numbers and they're staggering. And Lord, so many are dealing with issues today that can only be comforted by you. And so we bring it to you, Lord. We bring all of our concerns, we bring all of our issues, all of our disappointments and Lord, we bring depression and we bring all of those things that are holding your children back. We bring it to you. And Father, even in the midst of all the darkness that this world offers, there is still glimmers of light. And we've heard all week long of praise reports of those that have recovered and those that are recovering. Father, we thank you for those that have been blessed financially with jobs and we thank you for families that were able to come together safely. Lord, so much we owe to you. Our attitude is one of gratitude. It is one of love. And so, Father, we stand on the promise that you said you'd never leave us. And so, Lord, today is our prayer that you would help us so that we will never leave you. Bless us and keep us now. Together, once again, in your holy name we pray. Amen. Oh, it's always good to be with you. Always good to have you here. I just want to say thank you for the many of you that have been faithful and giving your tithe and your offering. Even during this time, you've been good to the Lord and you've been a blessing to us. Even those that have mailed in their offering, we thank you. We received it and God bless you. It's going into the place where God has definitely set aside for us to do his work. We ask you to be faithful to God because he's faithful to us. He's given to us and we've made four different ways which we share for you to give even more uh, for you to be faithful in your giving. The easiest of course is our, our, our push pay which we use each day, each week, allowing people to give as often as they like and as freely as they will. And we thank you. We thank you for your giving. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for being faithful to God in your tithe giving. And we simply say thank you for your love and your care for us on this Sabbath day. Oh, I love it. I love when the mood is set. I love when our musicians are in place. And right now, Richard is in place. And we ask you, Richard, if you would set the tone for us for our worship today. God bless you.
Thank you, Richard. Thank you so very much. Again, we're so happy to have you with us today here on this Sabbath day. And we bless the Lord for you today. I know many of you had a wonderful Thanksgiving and had wonderful meals. And uh, although in many instances it had to be modified this year, having to have virtual services and talk to family virtually on the phone or computer. But it didn't take away from the meal for many of you. And there's something that often happens, of course, many of you will have your meals over again for the next couple of days. And it's a warm feeling after you've eaten your meal and hopefully you'll exercise. We believe in exercise as well. But there's something that comes over us after we eat. You all know what I'm talking about. You start to get that glassy-eyed look and get real comfortable and you begin to drift a little bit. And we want to talk about that today. We want to help fight that drift today. And we want to fight that drift not only from a meal, but at this time in Earth's history, there's a strangeness. We're not able to come into our churches as we normally have. and We don't get to see each other and hug, and that's what Christians do. And so because it's so different right now, there is a there is a feeling for many of emptiness. There's a feeling for some that they are alone. There's even a feeling for some that may be on the edge and their faith is beginning to shake and wane. So we want to pray today. We want to fight the drift today. Father in heaven, bless us in your word and give us an understanding. Father, we need you now more than ever. We need you, Lord, to help us to stay focused and to stay committed. We help Pray that you'll help us to fight the drift, Lord, to stay committed to you as you have been committed to us. Bless us now as we spend time together in your word and with one another. In your holy name we pray. Amen. If you have your Bibles, and I know you do, you've gone with us as we did our affirmation of faith. Uh, in the New Testament, there is First and Second Thessalonians, and I'd like for you to go to Second Thessalonians with me, if you would. Uh, and we're going to begin at verse one of Second Thessalonians in the Bible. We'll give you a second to get there, and it's on the screen even as our media department is doing their work. In my Bible, it says this: Now we beseech ye. Or beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. Hopefully your Bible says something like that. That ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us as that day of Christ is at hand. And then verse 3 is a power verse. You need to get this. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away, a drifting first, and that man of sin be revealed. The son of perdition is what he's called, who opposeth and exalted himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. You have to remember everybody we've been saying it all along and you know it as part of uh, a member of this faith body of Christ that the enemy of God is always attempting 
to keep God's people from connecting with God. Always attempting to try to replace God and, and to stand in the place of God. Always attempting to uh, exalt himself and even those who are connected can fall victim to it, to the drift. In Matthew, it talked of uh, these virgins who had been invited to a wedding. You know the story. Uh, go there with me, if you will, uh, to the book of Matthew, chapter 25. As Christ is speaking himself, and he gives a parable of these young bridesmaids. In Matthew 25, beginning at verse one, then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. That's what the Bible says. The five that they that were foolish uh, took their lamps and they took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. And while the bridegroom tarried, verse 5, they all slumbered and slept. That's where we are now. There are many people who are drifting by sleep. Got all this extra time on their hands. And uh, they've gone through all of the uh, television and all of the, uh, the normal events. And now they just have time to lounge. And, and they begin to drift away and, and drift into this restful sleep. And as this parable is showing us, uh, uh, five of uh, them were wise because they had enough oil and five were foolish. What made the difference? So glad you asked. The oil in this story represents the Holy Spirit. In our church, we, we ask that we begin the day every day by saying, Lord, empty me of me and fill me with you. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Give me the oil, not only of your word, but give me you. And so five had enough to get extra oil, and, and the oil flows, and we've shared the oil flows when you, when you study the word of God. The oil flows when you participate in a service like this one. The oil flows when you get on the prayer line. The oil flows when you call somebody and stay uplifted so you can help fight the drift. The oil is flowing then, and five knew that I need to have oil because there's going to come a time such as this. Can't you feel it? It, it, it? The best way to describe it is like after you've eaten that, that meal on Thanksgiving. And they say there's something for those who are uh, uh, meat eaters who, who, who consume uh, 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 that, that bird. And, and they say there's something in, in a turkey that I, I hear it's called tryptophan or something like that, that, that has an ability to, to just lull you to sleep. But even more so than that, as we read in the scripture, the enemy of God wants to lull you equally away from God in a season of drifting. And many people are at that place of drifting right now. Many people are drifting from God, and, 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 and there are signs that you can look at, things that will help you know whether or not you're drifting from God. Uh, one of the major indicators that you're drifting from God uh, is, is your attitude toward the execution of your usual faith practices. In other words, usually you're able to go to your church, your house of worship, all those things that are normal to you, and, and now, of course, we can't do those. And, and that change of having to be more accountable by studying the word alone or by seeking out uh, services that will help you to stay faithful and we often find ourselves uh, drifting. Jude chapter 1. In fact, there's only one chapter in Jude. That's right before the book of Revelation in Jude 1, 20. Uh, in my Bible it says this, But ye, beloved, build up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, 
you, you, you can find out whether or not you're drifting away if, you're, if you don't have an attitude uh, of, of, of faith and uh, don't have the extra initiative to seek out and to pray, then you might be possibly drifting away. And then uh, another sign of your possible drifting away from God is apathy. That's what I see. Apathy where you, you, you just, uh, it's about having no interest in spiritual things anymore because you're not doing your routine. And that's a place where some are finding themselves during this time. It's apathetic. And if you're not connecting with others, if you don't have a, an accountability partner, if you don't have a prayer partner, uh, we want you to have a prayer partner to contact us. If you don't have someone that uplifts your spirits, if you don't have someone that you're studying the word of God with, if you don't have someone that you don't have an appointment on a, on a Wednesday evening or a Tuesday evening to check in with God. We do it every day at 12 noon. It's not long. We stay on the line for 30 minutes. But that 30 minutes is a check-in to keep me, keep the preacher from drifting, to keep you from drifting, to allow us to go and spend at least 30 minutes of that day in prayer. And to keep us focused and not to get an apathetic uh, uh, attitude, to, to, to have a, a, a space where we have an attitude of, of executing our faith by praying together and allowing God to hear our petitions, but more importantly, and to allow him to respond to us by listening to our brothers and sisters, by staying connected to him. Another sign of drifting is hopelessness. In John chapter 10, verse 10, go there with me. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John 10, 10. In the Gospels, John 10, verse 10 speaks of this. It speaks of the thief that comes. In my Bible, it says this, the thief come not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But the Lord said, I come that they may have life and they may have life more abundantly. The thief wants to steal your joy. <laughs> the thief wants to steal your, your, your peace and to steal your your faith and your connection with God. And now more than ever, he has free reign because the whole world is just drifting. But it's times like this where we are really called to, to dig in. We're really called to, to understand that the Lord has plans for us and that even in the midst of this time, that it is a wonderful time to really spend with him. It is a time to build up your spiritual bank and to be able to deal with the conflicts and the uh, issues of life that come. See, one of the things of drifting, what drifting does, drifting takes us to a place of depression. Drifting takes us to places that are, that are dark and not helpful, not uplifting, just for everyday life. Drifting does not allow us to focus and have a concentration on really anything. We just blow in the wind. Now, we want to fight the drift, and the way to fight the drift is we have to fight the drift in three different ways. We're not going to be long today. Three ways to fight the drift. Number one, number one, to fight the drift, you've got to be able to reflect. Huh? You've got to be able to spend some, some time. Even though you have all this space, you need some quiet time and ask God to show you where and how you may be drifting. He'll respond. Uh, drifts are, are, are prompted by something, a, a change in a job. Maybe you've lost your job. Maybe, maybe you've uh, lost a family member. Uh, maybe you've lost interest in something. But, but, but reflecting on God and saying, Lord, help me. Now more than ever, I need your help, Lord, because I'm drifting away. I'm on the edge. And I thought I had more in my spiritual bank uh, then I'm finding out now, and, and I'm finding out that my, my bank is, is, is depleted, and, and, and I have insufficient faith. Another way to help someone who's drifting is those of you who have extra oil. Uh, that's on us as Christians, our brothers and sisters. Call them up. Check on them. 
Allow them to know that even though we're apart from another, we're not apart from God and we're connected. And that's where these other virgins who had extra oil, they had extra oil because they had stayed connected and, and those who didn't have enough. So reflecting allows us to be able to see what God has done in our past. Reflecting quietly with God and asking him, Lord, show me where I'm drifting. I want to fight this drift. I want to snap out of it. I want to be connected. I want to stay on track with you. And then the second way of fighting the drift is repentance. Repentance? Repentance for what? Repentance has always been a part of the message. Repentance was part of the message when John the Baptist preached and he said, you must repent. And John knew that he was not the light, but he was a lesser light leading to the light. And when the light of the world had come, you know what I'm talking about, Christians. When Jesus came, who is the light of the world, Jesus picks up that same message and he tells us that we too must repent. In fact, it's in 1 John 1, 9, where it says that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You see, there are times in the drift when we give license to our will and forsake pursuing God and pursuing God's will. But he gives us an opportunity to lay it all at the altar, everybody. He gives us an opportunity when we repent. Uh, he gives us an opportunity to lay all those things aside and extend ourselves to Jesus as Jesus extends his arms to us. Repentance is still part of the process. We've got to reflect on what he's done. We've got to reflect in quiet times of asking him, Lord, help me to see where my drift is and where it's begun. And then repent. And then the very last one, uh, ways to reel back and to fight back against the drift, you've got to be able to release. Uh, this season of Thanksgiving, uh, we talked about not only the blessings of God, but we also talked about forgiveness. And we talked about how you can use this season of family to release those past hurts and pains. As you lay your issues on the altar of God, release yourself of the weight of what you've been carrying. Uh, human nature has the propensity uh, to lay them down only to return later and pick them up. But no, we want to we wanna release whatever it is. We want to be supercharged and returning and having the blessing of God in our life, keeping us thriving, healthy, not only physically, not only mentally, not only spiritually, but in such a way that it will keep us connected together with the master. Releasing all that has happened in the past uh, and allow it to help us fight the drift. Now and more than ever, God's people feel as though they're slipping away. In Matthew 28, 20, in Matthew 28, 20, God is speaking to us once again. In Matthew chapter 28, verse 20, God is saying that I'm with you always. The famous last words that he's given us all the way in the final words of the book of Matthew. But 20 says, teaching all others to observe those things I've commanded you. And then the promise that I'm with you always even until the end of the, the world. Powerful stuff to help us fight the drift. Powerful promises to help us stay connected. Powerful because now we need it more than ever. People are drifting. And we want to have them to know that this God has not forgotten them. This God has not forsaken them. That this God loves them immensely. Go with me to Romans, Romans chapter 8. And I often tell people, if you feel the drift, understand that this God loves you more than you even know. Uh, go to Romans chapter 8, and you will be able to see that you're drifting away. You can fight it because you have the ability, because you are already 
a conqueror. Romans chapter 8, verse 37, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. And so God has said, I am persuaded. Uh, uh, Paul has said, I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor death nor any other creature shall be able to separate us. You see, the enemy of God wants to separate us. The enemy of God wants to use this time for people who are drifting. And God is trying to say that there's nothing that will separate you from him. And the way to know that is you have to stay connected with him. Even if you don't have the ability, even if your weakness is at the point where you don't have the strength to go any further, this God reaches out to you. That's where others come in and in the form of intercessory prayer. We hear it all the time. People praying for a brother. People praying for a sister. People praying for somebody in their family. People praying for a neighbor. People praying for our city. People praying for our nation. People who have enough oil to help somebody else right now. Nothing like finding out how strong your, your, your friends are and your neighbors are than when you're going through a crisis. I shared it and I saw people I had lived next door to for years. You may have waved at them. You may even know their name. But it wasn't until a crisis came that you were able to see who had enough oil to help others. Right after a storm had come through and everybody had lost power and no way to connect up, neighbors began to come out. And for the first time, they began to talk to one another because they realized they were all in the same boat. And they began to share. And you realize as you're sharing, well, oh, you don't have that. Well, we have this. Oh, you don't have power here. You can hook up to our generator. Oh, you don't have that, child. I got some of this, just what you need. You broke that. Oh, you need a tarp. We got a tarp. No different than what God is saying to those that you have to have enough oil and if you have enough to be able to share it and help somebody else so to help them fight their drift and the best way to help somebody fight their drift is to invite them to go on their knees in prayer the most powerful way to reconnect is through prayer the most powerful way to fight the drift is not only to reflect on what God has done. Yes, you must repent as well. But the most powerful way is to release all of that's going on inside your head right now. All that's happening in your home right now. All that's happening with your job right now. All that is happening with your health right now. Let it go and bring it to the foot of the cross. And bring it to God and allow God to know that your connection to him is what you desire more than anything else to bring you back from the drift. Because right now, you're drifting. And you want to come back. You need God to pull you back. You need God to reassure you that he's still in charge. That no matter how things look, that that job that you lost, it's all right, child, he can get you another one. That right now, as you're laying in your hospital bed and worried whether or not you're going to survive this illness or your, your, your loved one will survive it, that this God says, I'm with you. And that even if this sickness leads unto death, I'll never leave you. And I have the power to raise you back up. So we have to fight the drift together, everybody. Check your oil supply and see if it's enough. And the way to replenish your oil supply is by allowing the word of God to flow. 
Starting the day off, like we said every day, say, Lord, empty me of me because I don't have enough oil. And fill me with the Holy Spirit. Allow him to fight my battle. Allow him to take all these worries. Allow him to be the fighter of this drift in your life to bring you back. And then those who are the salt of the world, that's our brothers and sisters in Christ who have the ability to help somebody, not just on Thanksgiving, but to help somebody who is slipping away. Reach out to them. Now more than ever, reach out to them and say, I may not have the ability, but when we pray together, God can do a mighty work in our lives. I still trust in this God. Do you? I still trust in him. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus. Why? Because I stand on his promises. I stand on the power. All authority has been given unto him, and I stand on the promise that God has given us. I hope you'll be able to do that too. I hope someone will come alongside you in your need right now. We're praying for you. We're praying that God will seek you out in your situation and will bring you back and draw you back because he is the anchor, everybody. And nothing stops a drift more than the anchor. And that anchor is Jesus. Father in heaven, how we trust you, how we've proved you over and over. Lord, today I pray for that one who is finding themselves weak in the faith. I ask today, Lord, that you allow someone with enough oil to come their way. On no other day than today, what a great time, Lord, on this Sabbath to help us identify those that are drifting. Help us identify those that are feeling as though they are sinking. Help us identify them, Lord, and then give us the ability, because we have asked the Holy Spirit to take charge of us, to be your hands, to be your feet, to be a blessing to somebody, to help somebody along the way, so that we can pick them up, and we'll walk this journey together. We'll walk until your strength comes back. We'll walk until you're able to realize that this God is our God and all power is still his. And so that's our prayer today. Father, allow us to be a blessing to somebody as you have been a blessing to us. Now keep us, Lord, because we cannot keep ourselves. And we offer this prayer with gratitude, with that attitude of praise. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Praying for you. Praying that the Lord will be a major factor in your life. God bless you. Let's fight this truth. By his blood we're washed clean. Now we have the victory. Listen good. The power of sin is broken. Jesus overcame it all. This is what he did, everybody. He is one of freedom. Jesus has won it all. Lift your hands.
I want you to know that he reigns over your sickness. Hey, he reigns over cancer, diabetes. He reigns over cancer, diabetes. He reigns over cancer, diabetes. Hey, he's your healer. So this is what we sing. If you believe it tonight, sing with me, say, Hallelujah, you have won the victory. Be encouraged tonight and cross over, he's already won it. ready to take my seat. I just want you to declare tonight, I'm crossing over. I'm crossing over. Tell yourself, uh, I'm crossing over. I'm crossing over. Be of good cheer. I'm crossing over. I'm crossing over. 